Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on, guys? It's Filthy, and I'm back with another video. Guys, this is an incredibly lazy speed farm. It is absolutely amazing. In the background, you're currently seeing T16 with no Paragon points, and that's not no main stat Paragon. That is no Paragon, period. Nothing in crit, nothing in cooldown, nothing in attack speed, area damage, resource cost reduction, zero zilch nada, and we still flatten T16 with this thing. It is so powerful. Now I'll cut to some T16 with the correct pieces in now and you'll notice how much quicker it's moving. We also can swap some gear pieces and flatten GR90 in three, three and a half minutes. It's absolutely incredible. It's so tough, so tanky, really easy to play. It's pretty much just hold right click down the whole way, vortex enemies towards you. And guys, for me, this is pretty much on par with Whirlwind. It feels just like PTR when we were smashing the Whirlwind everywhere. Maybe it's a little bit behind, but it's negligible. It's very, very close. It's, as I say, really good fun. Now, before we jump in and I show you exactly how it works, I just want to welcome anyone who's new to the channel. If you're interested in Diablo 3 at all, do subscribe. Plenty more videos coming after this one. Really excited for the start of the season, and I'll be doing my best to cover all the top builds, all the new builds. So if you want more videos like this, do hit subscribe. And as always, guys, a thumbs up is greatly appreciated. Now I think we'll start with the T16 because that's probably the most interesting. We're going to be taking some Wuku and Patterns of Justice. Then I'll show you the GR. So if you just want to skip to the GR90 version, timestamp on screen now and in the description. And at the end of the video, we'll have a little chat about Wave of Light just for those who are curious as to whether this is better, worse and where it fits in. So looking at the gear, we're going to take five pieces of some Wukus. We're also going to take two pieces of the new Patterns of Justice set. So this is new for 267. Now you have to take the boots because there are no some Wuku boots, but then you're going to pick any other gear piece for your pants of justice. Ideally it would be the shoulders because these are what we're going to swap out in the GR speed farm, but just go with whatever you've got that's got the best rolls on it. Now looking at the set bonuses, some Wuku two piece, 50% damage reduction while sweeping wind is active, completely meaningless for the key farming build because we'll be immortal with gold wrap, but it's useful for the GR version. Four piece we don't care about at all, it does absolutely no damage in either version. The six piece we get 1500 extra damage on, importantly Tempest Rush for every stack of Sweeping Wind we have. We're going to have 13 stacks, so that's nearly 20,000% extra damage. And that's absolutely massive. Now the reason that we can get 13 stacks is because the Vengeful Wind has now been buffed for 267. We get Sweeping Wind stacks increased by 10. We start with three anyway, so an extra 10 is 13. Now this is now really easy to roll this weapon because we don't care about the sweeping wind damage multiplier so you just need to get yourself an ancient one and you're pretty much good to go. But to be honest you'll do it fine with non-ancient but obviously ancient is better. Now in terms of the patterns of justice we can only work two pieces in for the free slots but what this basically does is it gives us every rune on sweeping wind. Not really bothered about that, the one that generates spirit is pretty much the only one worth having. But importantly guys we get 5% move speed for every stack of sweeping wind. 13 stacks, that's 65% move speed. That's how we can move from pack to pack very quickly. And that's why we take this for the key farming build. We dump it for the GR speed because we need better items and more toughness, but it is very nice to have the 65% move speed buff and it is very good. Now importantly, we're also gonna take the new One Kim Lao. This has got a increase to Tempest Rush damage and also Cyclone Strike. And what happens is that when we hit with Tempest Rush, we activate Cyclone Strike automatically. Both skills get a multiplier up to 600% and that hits really really hard and that's because we've got a balance in the cube which is going to buff up Tempest Rush by 600% and if we hit three or fewer enemies we gain 100% critical hit chance that's a massive damage increase in particular very good for single target and rift guardians also we're going to take Caesar's Memento 800% damage on Tempest Rush whenever we blind freeze or stun an enemy we're going to automatically freeze enemies because we're going to be taking Cyclone Strike with the rune Wall of Wind. If you don't take this rune, it doesn't automatically freeze things. So this is how we proc the damage. You don't need to activate it. It's automatically activated with the rune upon it. You just need to hit with Tempest Rush. But guys, you can probably see 20,000% on the set, 600% on your one Kim Lau, 600% on your balance, 800% on your Season Memento. It's no wonder this thing absolutely dumps out damage. But the multipliers haven't stopped there. We're also going to work in a Taeguk. Mine's giving me an extra 58% once I get up to my 10 stacks. Stacks don't really drop off, so I think this is probably better than the Bane of the Trapped. But by all means, if you just wanted the flat damage, you could take it. 
Bear in mind though guys, Taeguk hits Jugs just as hard as regular enemies because the Bane of the Trapped you have to slow and obviously Jugs are immune to that. So bear that in mind, but it's you know you can consider swapping it in. Now another really good gear piece is the Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. This will reduce our cooldowns by one second. It picks one at random whenever we hit with Tempest Rush. Really good for keeping up Epiphany, which is a good source of resource management for us. And it gives us almost unlimited access to teleport. And we do also have Mystic Ally on command as well, pretty much whenever we want. So really handy gear piece, helps the build out a ton. The rest of the items pretty much go to utility. So we've gone Legendary Gemwise, Wreath of Lightning for the extra 25% move speed. We've gone for a Boon of the Hoarder so that enemies drop gold when they die. We will then take the Gold Wrap to make us immortal when we pick up gold. We're also going to have the Avarice Band which will Vortex in the gold for us. Now you don't get too much utility out of this because it's such a close range build but the laziest easy way is to leave it on. Now if you're struggling for damage guys you can swap the Avarice Band out for a Convention of Elements. You can swap the Wreath of Lightning out for a Bane of the Trapped and obviously you can see you'll hit pretty hard. Now one thing I didn't mention on the weapon is, is if you notice it's second property there it always rolls with lightning skills damage. We're going to take the lightning rune on Tempest Rush so we're going to get even more damage out of this weapon. And guys this build just hits so incredibly hard. Lastly guys as always Nemesis Braces to get extra elites and champions and then we're going to take a Rog in the cube to round out all of our gear slots. Now in terms of the skills we're going for Tempest Rush, Electric Field, this is to get the most out of the weapon with the extra lightning damage. So you can get lightning damage on your weapon, braces and amulet, pretty huge damage spike. Mystic Ally, Air Ally, this will give us passive Spirit Regen which is obviously very nice and it is a Spirit Potion just in case we accidentally hold down Tempest Rush too long and our Spirit depletes. But to be honest, it's not too much of a problem, but I wouldn't take it off because every so often you'll get a speed pile on, boosting up your attack speed quite a lot, and you might need to rely on this a bit more then. But resource generally isn't a problem, but it's there and it's quite handy. Sweeping Wind, we need this because we have to activate the Samwuku's bonus. Now pick whichever rune you want because you get all of them, so it doesn't really matter. Epiphany Insight, this will give us extra spirit regen. We want to numlock this so that it just goes off constantly. What we do is we hold down Tempest Rush whenever this is ready to be activated again. Take your finger off Tempest Rush, Epiphany will auto cast, and then whack your finger back on Tempest Rush again. Pretty easy. If you notice your spirit's going down, probably you've not activated this. So just pop it and off you go again. Cyclone Strike Wall of Wind, this is how we're getting the freeze for the Caesar's Memento. We don't need to cast it, which is great, so you don't ever touch this, just leave it, you don't want to press it at all, it just wastes spirit. And then we've gone for Teleport, Dashing Strike, Way of the Falling Star, extra move speed after we dash, you want to ideally dash once every 4 seconds, but you can just hold down Tempest Rush if you want, it's absolutely fine. Now this will be very useful for the season because it will make chaining enemies together a lot easier. You can dash 50 yards away and that's fine. I was playing around with Mantra of Conviction just to get extra damage and move speed and that works quite nice as well and it's one less button to press so it arguably is even more chill but I do think the clear times are fast with dashing strike just because having that mobility and being able to move 50 yards instantly is actually really nice. Now I'm sure someone's going to ask me about Sweeping Wind and Master of the Wind this doesn't work too well because you have to have three consecutive seconds of sweeping wind before you freeze. So that's why we need cyclone strike. So it'd be amazing if this froze instantly, uh, but unfortunately it doesn't. So I would still take cyclone strike and take the rune on it. Passive wise, beacon of Utah, 20% more cooldown. Amazing for epiphany. Momentum gives us an extra 20% move speed pretty much at all times. Very handy for getting keys and speed rifting. Relentless assault, 20% extra damage against frozen enemies. All enemies will be frozen except for Juggernaut, so we may as well take it. And near-death experience, just in case we do something wrong. This might go off at the start of the rift, because until you kill something, you are going to be squishy, because you're relying on the gold wrap for your toughness. So it is handy, but once you've killed one enemy, because of the avarice band, that's it, you'll be away, and you won't look back and probably won't use it again. Now in terms of stats, you're going to want to get Tempest Rush damage on your boots and on your helm, both quite important. You don't need any attack speed, you want to get cooldown everywhere you can. Area damage is nice, crit damage is nice, but as you've seen guys, I've shown you T16 with no Paragon, so I wouldn't sweat the stats too hard. Much more important to get the stats right for your GR build, 
which we'll move into now. Now for the GR build, as I say, GR90 in three minutes is amazing. It's still really easy to play and really tough and tanky. We're gonna leave the cube exactly as it was. So balance, Caesar's Memento and the Rogue. We're actually gonna switch out the POJ for Crimsons. So boots and belt, you're gonna to have to take belt for Crimsons and you're gonna to have to take boots as well. Now I've got Wave of Light damage on mine just because I've been playing a lot of Wave of Light and trying to see if I can get Wuko up to T16 with that. So bear in mind guys, I'd have an extra 15% damage. The footage was filmed with these boots. I probably will re-roll them at some point, but this is what I've got at the moment. Now what the Crimson set does is it gives us 20% extra cooldown, it gives us 20% resource cost reduction. Both of those things naturally for this build are excellent. When you move on to the three piece, we get a damage increase based on our cooldown reduction percentage and a damage reduction based on our resource cost reduction. As we can afford to sacrifice one Sambuku piece, we're gonna take the mantle of channeling. This gives us extra damage and extra damage reduction whilst we are using Tempest Rush, which obviously suits this build down to the ground. And we're gonna swap out the Avarice Band and the Boon of the Hoarder for a Unity and a Bane of the Powerful. This is just to allow for extra survivability. Obviously GR90 is starting to hit pretty hard, so the Unity will give us a double toughness. Just make sure your follower has one and make sure they also have the token that renders them invulnerable. Now if you do want to drop the GRs a little bit lower, just so that you have a bit more toughness, what you can do is put the Rogue here and you could then maybe put a flavor of time in the cube and that'll give you double pylons, but obviously you're losing a layer of mitigation, so it's a bit of an offset. Bane of the Powerful is also quite helpful because it's going to give us elite damage, so we're going to put them down quicker, and that also pairs with the increased elite damage that rolls naturally on the Unity. But again, if you were to swap for a Wreath of Lightning, that would make you move quicker, so again, it's another swap that you can try. So we're going to swap out Harmony and the passives, so we're going to take off Momentum and we may as well go for the extra 40% resistance. Now obviously you need to try and get resistance as a secondary on all your gear because that will give you the most out of this. And obviously for gems at the moment we've gone for dex gems in the chest and pants but if you were to swap them out for diamonds you get much more value out of your harmony and that would give you a nice toughness buff but i found that doing gr90 is pretty much fine there's no toughness problems i haven't died once doing gr90 obviously i haven't got caught in an explosion and that probably would proc me but it's really tough and tanky so i do think you can afford the dex gems for a while but it is certainly a swap you can do now, in terms of Paragon, for the T16 one, if you find you're running out of spirits, you can put some points into maximum spirit. But for the GR one, because you've got the Crimson set, you don't need them. Obviously, move speed up to 25%, and then I dump everything into decks. For offense, cooldown reduction is obviously brilliant. Fill out your crits, and then attack speed is last. For defense, you want all res, life percent, armor, and then life regen. And then utility, resource cost reduction definitely first, then area damage, life per hit, and gold find. Now, I have been using my full 1200 Paragon in the footage, but bear in mind, guys, my sheet damage is only 1.3 million and my dex is only 12.5. You know, this gear that I've got isn't very well optimized. A few of the pieces are ancient, but most of them have got like vitality and armor rolls on them. You know, I'd want area damage on my shoulders. I'd probably want area damage on my gloves. Fine, I've got the odd augment here and there, but it's nothing crazy. It's, you know, most of this gear isn't brilliant. This weapon's non ancient. My other weapon, I've got vitality on it. Again, not ideal. The percentage roll on my Tempest Rush could be higher. As we talked about, another 15% worth of juice to go on the boots, which would be nice. And you want to make sure you get lightning on your amulet and on your braces, because obviously that's going to juice up your lightning damage quite a lot. So that's it guys, it's a load of fun to play, really chill, really easy, it's been very hard not to juice this up with loads of augments just to see how far it can go. With the season theme behind it and a lot of juice, you could be speeding hundreds in like three and a half, four minutes. It's absolutely incredible, a really, really strong build and I'm really pleased that this has worked out as well that it has. Now I did say we'd have a little chat about Wave of Light. Now, for keys, I think Legacy of Dreams Wave of Light would probably be quicker than the POJ Sunwuku Monk because you can infinitely teleport with that. But obviously that needs juicing up. You need your Legacy of Dreams at 99. You need all your pieces as ancient. And it's certainly not as chill as this because this is just super, super easy. Now, Sunwuku Wave of Light can also do T16, but I personally haven't got there. And having watched a video the other day, it looks like sheet damage of about 2 million is needed. I'm not going to get there as a casual player, even in the season, if I put a load of effort in. So I'd say this is probably going to be better for Keys than St. Wuku. Again, in terms of speed rifting, I think this is probably going to be stronger than Wave of Light because it's just so easy and very, very quick. But again, obviously, the right player on Wave of Light, the right augments, 
you know, it would be a nice battle, but I mean, GR19, three minutes, three and a half minutes with the gear that we've got, with the stats that we've got, I do think is pretty, pretty strong. So that's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the build. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave me a thumbs up if you did. I wish you all the best for season 19. I hope RNGs is very kind to you. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.